Welcome back. Now, the amount of biogas you can extract from your organic waste depends on the waste itself and the design of the digester system. Some digesters can yield 20 cubic meters of biogas per ton of waste, while others can yield as much as 800 cubic meters per ton. So, with our system, if you're feeding something like cow dung, you only require about one bucket, which is about 20 kilos of waste per day. But generally, uh, feeding biogas depends on how much co uh, your consumption, so you regulate your feeding against your consumption. But also, it also depends on the food value of whatever you're feeding. For example, the person who's feeding cow dung and the person who's feeding market waste will feed different amount of uh, waste. The person feeding market waste will feed less because market waste is more potent and will produce a lot more gas compared to cow dung. But basically, when you own a biogas system, in a very, very short time, it will be like your car. You know, if I feed one bucket of dung, it will uh, last me this many days or this many hours. So you'll be able to regulate according to the consumption. Although biogas is highly explosive when mixed with air, practical experience shows that it is relatively safe considering reported cases of explosions. It is however important to be cautious by ensuring open flames are not permitted within 6 meters of a biogas plant. Technicians should also ensure that all biogas is evacuated from a digester before they enter during repair or inspection. This is simply because biogas can displace oxygen and cause suffocation. In case of leakage, either in the house or in an enclosed area, ensure proper ventilation by opening doors and windows to let out the gas. Um, because we're running out of firewood, we are, we are, we've got global warming on our hands. Global warming is coming about because of, uh, primarily because of the fossil fuels we're using are releasing huge amounts of carbon dioxide to the environment. And then the solar, the solar, the UV from the solar is heating up those carbons and heating, and it's coming from, live alone just the, 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 the fuels of our, our engines and what have you, but it's also coming from charcoal. Every time we cut down a tree and we, we, we make charcoal, every time we burn, burn a fire, we're releasing carbon into the environment. Trees are carbon sinks, so they absorb carbon dioxide. So by cutting them down and then burning them, you're doing double damage because you're taking away the carbon sink and then you're turning the, the wood back into carbon. Mother Nature took millions, probably hundreds of, millions, hundreds of thousands or millions of years, turning carbon into fleshy, leafy material. We then, in one second, we burn it. I mean, we really are not working with nature here. Mm. Yeah? So, biogas, if you look at the populations that are around, they're never going to get LPG to all their houses. Electricity is never going to be affordable. Uh, for cooking, that's a, a joke. So all of these electrification, you know, light the village programs, then none of them are focusing on, on cooking. You can do without lights, you cannot do without eating. You cannot do without cooking. So the, the primary focus of every developing country, the government, should be on how do you curb the destruction of the, the trees and replace it with biogas. Biogas is the easiest thing. <laughs> Kenyans who live in rural areas have no alternative fuel source than wood fuel. 75% of the population lives in rural areas with no access to or money to afford liquid gas or kerosene. But the good news is that nearly everyone has a cow, pig or chicken. Biogas can actually be produced from any biological waste. So rural farmers and pastoral communities can produce more than enough biogas if only they had digesters. Dominique continues to challenge the current generation to change their mindset and stop using wood as a source of energy and embrace the use of biogas. We don't advise people to sell biogas as biogas. 
you'd rather add value to the biogas through like through the other activities that I've shown you, like brooding, you drink, uh, value adding to your milk, value adding to your produce, you make far much money than trying to sell the biogas. Because if you try to sell biogas as biogas, you'll be trying to compete with the price of the charcoal, price of the LPG, price of paraffin. So it's a bit complicated trying to sell biogas as biogas. Yes. If you don't want to own a biogas yourself, then there is an option of uh, mini grading where you have one main system supplying different uh, households. Um, for example, you can have one system serving an apartment. You can also have the option of having biogas balloons whereby um, a retailer can be selling biogas the same way you go to buy paraffin and charcoal. You can be doing the same with biogas. Just using a biogas balloon, you go get a, f get a refill, use it when it's empty, go back that way. So it's possible. One other advantage of embracing any biogas technology is the fact that apart from getting free gas, you also get to manufacture your own compost manure, which as Josphat explains, acts as a good pesticide for your crops and seed bed. Well, there you've had it. I hope you've learned a thing or two about biogas and why you need to embrace it as a source of energy. Next week, we'll look at how solar is changing the lives of many farmers.